Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with the Adventures of the Memory Makers. Today I'm excited to bring something to you that people have actually been asking for instead of something that I just created off on my own. Cindy and I just got back from a five-day camping trip down in Hot Springs, North Carolina with the Bushwhacker Page members at the Bushwhacker Boil, the second annual, and we just had a blast. But right before we left, I did a quick modification to the camper that I'd been planning to do all along, uh, but just finally got the chance to do it. And it is kind of tied in with our galley. In fact, I need to open that up to access one of the controls for it. But it's something that, that really added a creature comfort to the whole camping experience. Um, my intent was for Cindy, and the funny thing was, did you even use it while we were there? No, I wanted this funny thing called a curtain before. I okay. Used it. <laughs> so what I added for Cindy's benefit that she didn't even use while we were there was a hot water heater to our bushwhacker. And that's a pretty common mod. There are several that I saw down at the bushwhacker rally that had a hot water heater on the side of or on attached to their, their teardrop somehow. But I did a couple things differently on ours. So let me flip the water switch on. So we got there we go, we got water pressure now. Let's come over to the other side and I'll show you what the things are that I did differently on ours than most people do. So if you follow our channel, you know that we totally gutted our galley last year and redid it. And I made provisions and had planned to install a hot water heater in the camper at that point. And one thing led to another and I just didn't get time to do it. So when we were going on this trip, I thought, you know, it'd be really nice if we did actually have hot water since we've got 24 gallons of fresh water on board. So I already had the hot water heater that was from a, a previous project when I built Cindy's camper that I didn't wind up using. So that was in my plan all along was to mount that on the camper so we could have hot water from our freshwater tank. So one of the things I did differently than most is I mounted the hot water heater directly to the camper. And there were a couple reasons that I did that. Uh, one was most people take a, like a truck step ladder, um, to make a goby ladder for these. It would be a ladder that would go up to the side of a tailgate. So they use that ladder off of Amazon and they mount it to the fender and then they mount it somewhere up on top, you know, to the camper itself, and then take the box and mount it directly to that ladder. This fender, you know, honestly isn't mounted to anything structural. I've seen several of them get ripped off uh, just from going down the road, blow out a tire, run over something. So it's not the strongest fender in the world. So I didn't want to do it from a strength aspect. Plus, we use our camper in our woods, and our trail is not that wide. So I didn't want it to increase the width of the camper any if I could avoid it. And from the ones that I've seen, they stick out about four to five inches, you know, depending on how they set their ladder up, you know, outside of the fender itself. So I wanted to stay, you know, within my current width of the camper. So, like I said, I, I had planned to mount it to the camper all along. And I had the benefit of knowing where the structure was inside the camper because I'd already had taken it all apart. So all along I had in my mind what I was going to do. Now that said, I did change a few things as I went along, but I stuck with my original idea of mounting the box onto the, the camper itself. And it's rigid. You can shake the whole, whole camper, you know, by grabbing the box. So, uh, you know, we drove down there 75, 80 mile an hour there and back like 700, some, some miles and had zero issue with this moving and it worked really well. So I'm gonna show you how I was able to find that, that structure inside of the wall uh, and try to help you out if you decide to mount your solid to the camper as well. The other thing that I did, when I originally built out our galley, I took the factory distribution block for the LP lines underneath the camper and moved it. But I capped them with the intent of running an LP quick disconnect out here to this side to plug this hot water heater into. And the more I thought about, it, the more I just didn't like that idea because I'm just not a fan of putting disconnects right in line with the road spray off your tire. Because no matter how well you put a cap in it, at some point in time, all that road spray and grit is going to get in that disconnect and cause you an issue down the road. So I just didn't, I wasn't fond of that idea. Plus the, the exhaust for our Propex heater comes out right here underneath our jack stand. So, you know, I didn't like the idea of running my LP line over top of that exhaust line even though the exhaust doesn't get that hot, it's just the whole idea I didn't like. So I got to thinking about it and I thought, well, why can't I just convert this to run on a one pound cylinder? Cause I've got a ton of these refillable cylinders. So that's what I did. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. So let me open this up and I'll show you what's inside the box and we'll go from there. So the box I chose to use for this, this modification was from Harbor Freight, one of my favorite stores. 
It's an Apache 4800. It's the largest of this series of box that they, they cover. So that's one thing that you gotta be cautious of off the bat. If you have a, a water heater in mind and you wanna use this box, make sure that it will fit in the box. And so I'm gonna open this up here. It's got four nice latches on it. It's a waterproof airtight box. Uh, it's not airtight now after what I did, but then you can see on the inside, I used an EcoTemp uh, on-demand hot water heater and this thing has just been marvelous. I, I absolutely love it. Um, like I said, I did this project for Cindy, but when I got down there and, and saw how nice it was to have hot water, oh my gosh, I just want to hug this hot water heater. <laughs> if, you've ever, if you're on the fence about doing this, oh my gosh, just, just do it. <laughs> so let me step aside here. <clears throat> so it's, it's very simple the way they work. They're all pretty much the same as far as their, their function goes. It's just some of them will be a little longer, a little wider, so you gotta make sure it fits. And I just kind of, you know, hope that it fit. And it, it's, it's a really tight squeeze, but I got it in here and, and it works really well. So the other thing that I did differently, you know, like I said, I did not run an LP line over here. I converted it to run to a one pound cylinder. And right off the bat, when I shared this on the Facebook page, the first question I think was, how long will it run on that one pound cylinder? I honestly can't answer that. I've ran it, gosh, probably a half hour off and on at the house before we left. I used it the whole time we were at camp. We've played around with it here at home since we got home. And I still can't tell that it used any LP out of this one pound cylinder. So I, I, I just, I'm gonna wing it and say, you know, it might run 10 hours nonstop on it. But it was a really simple, easy way to do it. It's all self-contained now, so I don't have any lines attached to the camper. I, I like it. You know, when I got there, I set it up, I screwed the bottle on, it stayed that way the whole time I was there. You know, it just worked really well. And if you've got a bushwhacker and you see this blue hose, Yes, I reused the factory hose that came with our bushwhacker. I was able to, when I did the galley, I moved the, the port, which was what the sink um, access for the water was on top of the original factory countertop. I moved that to this outside wall, and this was my intention all along, and left enough room for the box to go above it. So I was able to take that original line and cut it because it already had the correct fitting to go in the snap-in port here. I was able to cut that and put a PEX fitting that converted it to a half by 14 thread pattern. So you can see, if, if Cindy can get the light in there and show it, you can see I've got my water line in connection here, and then I use that same fitting over here to get my water line out. And then I'll talk about the fittings that I used over here to convert the gas to go to the one pound cylinder. But really, it was very simple. Uh, the one thing was, this is a 3 8 inch line. And those PEX fittings were set up for half inch. So I was, all I had to do was heat the end of this with my heat gun enough to get it soft enough to slide up over the nipple on that fitting. And then I was able to use the PEX style clamp and clamp it off and, and it's worked really well. Um, I am really surprised. Yesterday we did a test to determine um, how far or how long it takes. Um, we were trying to determine basically how much time we would have with the shower running. And this is the, the factory shower a head that came with the water heater and I adapted it to my water hose fitting so I can use this existing water hose so when we want to use it for a shower um, we can use this and then when we're wanting to use just regular water we can put the spray head back on it but we did a test to see what the flow rate was for the shower head and if you remember back on Seinfeld when the the building super changed all the shower heads to the low flow remember when Kramer came walking in he had that mop on his head and he couldn't get the soap out he could get the soap out with this one. It flows a gallon in 42 seconds. So I was, I was blown away by that. It's definitely not a low flow shower head. So based off of that, we got about 18 minutes of water with this thing running wide open. And it's just off and on, so you can't really control you know, how much flow. You can hear, that's what this selection does here is control the amount of speed. But wide open, you're gonna get a pretty healthy shower out of this. So I was really impressed by that. But back to the installation itself. It was tight. I just want to say that right off the bat, it was tight. And you know, the second most common question that I've received so far is, does it get so hot to melt my box? It hasn't so far. <laughs> so, and I've ran it wide open. It was probably longer than 10 minutes because I, I was just playing around with it and I was draining the tank out before I left to go to North Carolina. And I, I let it run for like 10 minutes and put my hand up there. And it was no hotter that evening when I did that than it is right now with the sun shining down on it. So I took the original shroud that came with it that originally went way up high here. It was probably like this high uh, from the factory. And I totally reworked that to get it to K 
capture that hot air and get it outside of the box. And, you know, I just kind of winged it. Didn't know if it was going to work or not, but so far I'm glad to say that it has worked. And you can see that there's an air gap between the shroud and the box itself. You don't want this touching the plastic because this does get pretty warm. So if this is touching the plastic, obviously it's going to transfer the heat from the shroud directly to your box, and you don't want that. But the way it is right now, it works really well. So let me, what I'm going to do is we're going to shut off here and I'm going to actually remove the heater from the box and show you how I mounted the box to the camper. Because I've already got the box sealed to the camper, I'm not going to remove the box from the camper, but I do have a box that I borrowed from Harbor Freight for a couple days to show you what I did to, in order to seal this up. So you I think paid I, for it, right? Oh, I did, yeah, but I told him I'd be back. <laughs> so, so I'll show you what I did to seal it to the camper and then uh, we'll just retrace the steps and put it back together and show you how easy this actually is. So I've got the water heater removed now, and it, it's really simple the way that that style water heater mounts. It merely hangs on this screw up here at the top with a keyhole slot on the top mount for the water heater. And I used a poly board material to block the water heater out and actually space it out as far as I could to try to get the heater out so it didn't have so much trapped air inside the heater at the top. So I got three quarter inch poly board top and bottom. And then these two screws here that you see, these are the main holding screws because they go directly into the structure of the wall that separates the galley area from the living area of our camper. So those are the two really strong anchor points right there. And then this screw right here uh, actually goes into the side uh, bracket or the side structure for the top shelf of the galley. And then this screw here goes into the structure for our cabinet in our 10 HD. And then this screw actually goes all the way through both skins, the inside and outside skin, and then it's fastened with a large OD washer and nut on the inside. And that's what anchors this to the camper. And it, it's been very tight, hasn't moved. And then, so I got it blocked out here with these poly boards. My three holes that I drilled in the camper, I wanted to be able to shut this up in the waters because I, I had water inside the tank of the, the hot water heater where I moved it. Um, but normally it's bone dry in there when everything's hooked up. So these three holes, you just have to line up where your fittings are going to be at and where they're going to exit the bottom. So I wanted those to be as, as sealed up as possible going down the road. And then the other are not airtight, but you know, I used, these are one inch knockout plugs that would fix a hole like in the side of your uh, breaker box in your house. So if you've got an open hole in that, this is a one inch plug. So it takes an inch and three eighths inch hole and these pop right in like that. I've got three of them to go in, and that keeps the dirt and dust and bugs outside of your sealed box when you're not actually using it. So that worked out really slick there. It gives me enough room to bring this PEX fitting here. There's enough room for that to come up through here, and then I'm able to take my fingers and, and just finger tighten this down. Um, I did have to trim the ears off. If you can see these little ears here, they were actually probably a quarter inch longer. Uh, with the ears on there, they wouldn't fit up in the hole. So I just trimmed those off. I still got enough there for grip. That works fine. And then this is the factory fitting that goes in that quick connect port here on the side of the camper. So I used two of these fittings. This is water in, this is water out. And then my gas line is over here. And even with the fitting on the gas line, this plug still goes in and caps that off. And there's about a quarter inch between the end of the the fitting on my gas port and this plug. So it works really well. I'm, I'm just tickled to death with how this setup turned out. So let's go over to the water heater now and I'll show you what I did to modify that. So on the water heater, let's make sure we can get good light here. So it came, this is the inlet port here and it's half by 14 thread. This is the outlet, half by 14 thread as well. So this is where our PEX fittings um, thread onto this. And like I said, I heated this polyvinyl line up enough in order to slide it over that barbed fitting. And then I used a PEX clamp to actually hold it in place. In all honesty, you know, once you heat that stuff up and it cools off, you probably wouldn't have to clamp it. But, you know, just good practice to go ahead and clamp it as well. If you don't have the PEX tool to do the, the clamp, you could use a, a gear clamp on that as well to do the same thing. This valve right here on this one is actually the drain valve. Um, so I could have opened that up and drained that tank before I, I made that mess in there. But either way, it's going to drain out when you take that off. This obviously is on off switch. And this is the, the gas inlet line right here. So <clears throat> it was half by 14 as well. 
So I went to the hardware store, got a half by 14 brass fitting that converts it to quarter inch male pipe thread. And then that allowed me to adapt a standard, it's 11 water column pressure grill regulator is essentially what it is. But I had to find one that had threaded fittings on both sides. So this fitting right here, I ordered from Amazon. It was about $10. And this is the key to the whole thing working. This converts from a 20 pound cylinder gas line that would normally go to your cylinder. This goes to that one pound cylinder now. And then on this end, I had a 3 8 inch uh, pipe thread on this side of the regulator. And I just converted that down to a quarter inch pipe thread. And then that threads right into this port here through that access hole that I've got in my water heater. So super simple. And like I said, I, I'm going to guess it will run it for 10 hours, maybe longer on a one pound cylinder. And the reality of this is, you know, you've only got a, a certain amount of water. So you're not going to run this constantly, you know, over and over again until your water's depleted. Some people might, but most people are going to try to regulate this and just use the bare minimum hot water that they need. So you could probably get one whole season out of one of these one pound cylinders. But this has worked really well. And then as far as the modifications to the box that I did, so this is a green box. They didn't have any more black ones, so I borrowed this one. <clears throat> so what I was able to do was I indexed it so that, let's say this is the front of the camper here. So obviously the door opens that way. You know, the heater goes in there. If you look on the back side of the box, you can see it's, it's got ridges with, you know, kind of embossed feet areas, I guess would be what it is. So I tried to make my holes go through these ridged areas. So when this gets pulled tight to the skin of the camper, the ridges themselves are going to create you know, a little bit of seal. But what I did was when I first took the box to the camper, I hung it on the very top one and I leveled the camper up to begin with. So it was level four and aft. So I was able to hang it on the top and then I was able to level the box and insert my second screw down here into that wall material inside the camper that is there to separate the galley area from the living area. So once I got these two in, the box was pretty well anchored. Then it was just a matter of measuring and finding where the others were, but they were all inside these grooved areas. <clears throat> so then once I got it mounted, I was happy with it. I took it, took it back into the shop. And because what I was wanting to do was get the, the water heater spaced out. I mean, if you put it in here without that in there, it really drops down in there. So I moved it out, measured for the knobs to make sure that the lid was still closed and just merely spaced it out with those poly blocks that I showed you on our existing black box. So I, had, I had mounted those from behind with uh, countersunk screws, sealed that, and then just transferred those holes through that I had drilled for these two here so I could go through that poly block. And then it became a matter of where do these holes have to be? So once I got it sitting in here on those blocks, I could measure and find out where my holes needed to be out here. And that was the one catch right there. So let me turn this so I can get the light to agree with me. So if you see here on the bottom of this unit, you've got these two big ridges right here. And what those are, I guess, is our protection for that latch right there. <clears throat> well, they were right smack in the way of two holes that I needed to drill. This is the foam for the lid that we don't need. But what I was able to do was, and this was really slick, I took one of my oscillating tool blades and took it to my belt sander and took all the burrs from the teeth off the bottom of that blade. So it made a very smooth surface. So I was able to cut these off and not destroy the plastic here because if I just would have took a sharp blade on there, it would have tore that all up. So I just shaved these off up to here. The lip that it attaches to, that this attaches to, is right here. So that is still intact. So that works fine. But that gave me a nice flat surface down here in order to drill my holes for my water line in, my water line out, and then my gas ports. And I'll show you over here on ours what that looks like. <clears throat> so if you come down underneath here, Cindy, you can see those two ridges that would have been right there. They are now gone and the hole for the, the gas line in and the water line out were right smack where those two ridges were. So that's the reason that I took those off and worked out very well. One other thing. So let's see if I can get it off here. This shroud, and, and every water here is probably going to be a little different, 
but the way this shroud works is it slides down on there and it's probably pretty tight now. Um, but I was able to take it out, just totally smashed it down, get a flat surface, and then rebent this down. So it is really tight. You can see how much clearance it's got there. So it captures that that gas, that hot air escaping out of here. And really, I'm, I'm really surprised at how little amount of air comes out. It's very efficient in its use of the gas that comes in. So you got a small burner area down here, and then you've got this heat exchanger that runs back and forth in here that's finned. So it really pulls as much heat out of that heat exchanger as possible, heating that water. So really the air that comes out, you know, I'm really surprised how well it works. Cause like I said, it doesn't get the top of the box hot at all. But you know, on this style, it just slides down in these two ears right here. And that's what retains this. Now, the one issue that that created was, you can see the keyhole in the back. I actually opened that up a little bit. Here's the, the factory keyhole down here. But I don't have access to the screw because of the lid. You can see there's no way to access that screw. So this just merely hangs on that screw. And then I use the bottom screw as retention to actually hold it in place. And we went over some pretty rough roads and, and hit some pretty wild construction. And it was still sitting in the box when I got back. So I'm gonna say it was a, a success from that standpoint. But once you get to this point, you got your fittings on there. Then it's just a matter of bringing it into the box. And I guess you, you have to find the location where you want the screw at. And you can do that in your shop before you bring it out here. But that top screw is key as you bring it in here, raise it up and it just hangs on that screw. Bottom screw goes in, locks it in place, and I'll put it back together here and I'll show you how she works. So once you get to your campsite and you want to you know, hook it up so it's going to be closed, you open your lid up, you pop your three covers off the bottom to access your holes. And what I found on this setup as far as being the, the easiest way to do it is I start this hose because it's surprising how, how much of retention it has in it for its coil effect. So I start it on the inlet stem right here. Once I get that started, I don't tighten it down. Then I'll flip my lid up and insert this into the quick connect port like that. And then get the stress off of it. Then I'll finish tightening it down here with my two fingers. And it doesn't have to be very tight. That's a pretty big rubber seal there. So I haven't had any issues with that leaking there. Then I will hook up my water outlet line. And again, you've got that memory in there for the cold effect. So you got to kind of deal with that, but it just goes up in there. And I don't know how well you're going to see it, but uh, just kind of reach in there with your fingers and get it where it starts. I'm trying to share my space with a camera here. So it wasn't quite as easy as it was by myself. But again, you can use those ears that there's still enough there that you can use them with your fingers. So that's tight enough there. And then <clears throat> you're going to take your LP regulator here. And I have some pipe thread tape on here. Now, the thing about this is you got a high pressure side over here. It's about 180 PSI inside that one pound cylinder, depending on what the air temperature is. And then the whole purpose of this regulator is to reduce that pressure down to 11 water column. And when I say water column, that's a unit of measure they use to measure air pressure less than one PSI. So it's actually less than a half PSI of air pressure. So I've been reusing that, that tape, but when it starts getting wore out, I'll replace that tape. So I'll just thread that up in there and snug it up with my hand. You don't have to be overly tight. It's just a half PSI that you're holding back. And then you take your one pound cylinder. I usually have a travel cap on top of it, but since I just took it off, I don't. And then insert that, push up, thread fast, and there you go. So that's it. It's hooked up and ready to roll now. Let me turn the water pump on. So water pump's on now. And the one thing you want to do before you actually turn on the heat side of this is you want to purge any air that is inside of your heat exchanger. So there's solid water in there. So it comes right out. So you got a nice steady spring or stream. So at this point, let's say you want hot water. It's as simple as reaching up underneath this unit and flipping that switch back. Now, <laughs> here's the funny thing. So I bought this, what, like three, four years ago? Mm -hmm. And it's been sitting on the shelf ever since. I got this idea, I'm gonna go hurry up and get this put on there. I'm like three fourths of the way through this project when it dawns on me, I really hope this thing works because <laughs> I had never tried it. So I didn't read the instructions either because I'm kind of that kind of guy. 
I put it all in, I get to this point, I turn that on, I'm like, hmm, nothing's happening. I didn't get a real warm, fuzzy feeling. And then, you know, break out the instructions, read how it's supposed to go. It will not light the burner until it senses flow through the unit. So it's got gas, the power's on, but until you squeeze the nozzle and actually start the flow through it, it will not light the burner. That's the whole on-demand aspect of the water heater, and it works very well. So if you step up here, you can watch the light in the window and you'll hear the you'll hear a couple of clicks and that's the igniter once the water starts to flow and then you'll hear the burner actually light. So there's clicks, there's the light. And in the night in the nighttime you can actually see the the flame through right there where it's heating the air coming out. So you can feel the warm air coming out, but up above there's none up here. So and right now we've got smoking hot water because I can actually feel it through the nozzle. Um, and you can adjust that. You can make it hotter with this knob right here. You can reduce the flow down here so that you, you know, don't have as much water coming out. Um, I've just been running on max. The moment you stop, it shuts the burner off. I mean, it, it's that fast. You know, that probably will be the thing that fails is that sensing switch if we ever have a problem with it. But so far, I am just thrilled with it. What, what's your thoughts? Well, when I get a curtain and I can use it, I'm pretty sure I'll be thrilled with it, too. We're waiting on FedEx to deliver our shower room so that I can get Cindy a curtain because she, she just didn't seem real keen on the idea of stepping outside the camper or nothing on and taking a shower in the campground. I don't get it. <laughs> but we used it. Well, take it back. I used it for five days, and, and I loved it. I mean, it, to have hot water at your camper, I mean, it is absolutely a game changer. Because, I mean, it's like all those big campers we see in the campground and going down the road. This is what they have. No, there's an inside, ours is outside. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was down there by myself for a couple of days, and, you know, to be able to step outside in the dark in the morning and, you know, and wash my hair off real quick, I mean, it's just, there's something about having clean hair and a clean face to start your day with that makes you feel better. <laughs> and now I'm not doing it with cold water, I'm doing it with hot water. And it, I just loved it. I mean, it was, I, I didn't know how much I was going to like. It's one of those things you never missed until you had it. Now I can say I'll never go out without it. <laughs> so, you know, if you see us somewhere, you know, this is going to be hooked up and running because unless it's water winter time and we don't have, um, you know, water in the tank, we just won't use it. But let me show you this shower thing real quick. Uh, to, to switch this is as easy as turning the pump off, drain the pressure off this. And we have no pressure accumulator tank on board in this camper because there, there really isn't room with everything else that we've got. So the pump kicks on and runs you know, pretty much from the moment that you start up, but it's just remove one sprayer, you know, install your shower here. I've got a, a coupler that I use to, to attach these to. And then we've got a holder that once our shower room gets here, uh, we'll put a video on that because we've got some plans for it that are kind of different. So it's as simple as this. It's hooked up and ready to roll now. So I'll reach back in and turn our pump back on. <clears throat> so I guess everything's still on because we got hot water coming out. <laughs> So this really thing. Really glad you didn't get the camera person. Yeah. That water. Well, it's hot water, so you wouldn't have been cold. <laughs> so, so you can shut it off there. I mean, it if like I said, it flows a gallon of water in 47 seconds. So we may actually have to turn that down a little bit to get it a little longer. But Cindy was worried about not having enough flow to wash her hair. I think this uh, get the soap out of your hair. What do you think? I think it will, but you know, you got to understand, long, thick hair takes a lot of water. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear this all the time. It's the reason I'm giving her a hard time. <clears throat> but overall, I think it's the ticket. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. So once we get our room, FedEx, it's, it's on the way right now. We're just waiting on the FedEx driver to show up. Once we get that room, we're going to get it attached. We're going to make a few modifications to that room. We'll be back with you on another video to show how well this works out, whether Cindy gives it two thumbs up or still trots back and forth down to the shower at the shower house. <laughs> I hope not. <clears throat> so thank you very much. I had a lot of people asking for this. So, you know, I, I tried to get this out as soon as I can. We got back from, from our trip. So, um, you know, I hope this helps you out. If you're on the fence about a hot water heater, uh, what's your thoughts? Do it. Exactly. So, it's like the ARB room. Do it. Yeah, if you got an ARB room, you need to modify it so it attaches to, yes, the, to the camper. Absolutely. Um, and we've got a, a video coming out on that soon. We're waiting on some. I made a prototype of what I'm going to call the water retention elimination device. Oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, it's a mouthful for keeping the water off the roof without having to drop a corner. <laughs> uh, we, we rode out one heck of a storm down in, in North Carolina and we basically babysitted the roof even with the corner dropped. 
So this this setup that I've got now, I've our water bill is probably going to be one hundred and fifty dollars because how much water I ran yesterday <laughs> working on this setup. But I've got it now to where you can leave the roof up, the water sheds off you know, like the back of a duck, and it, it works the way it should. So as soon as I get the final design put together, I'll put a video together, share that one with you. But uh, just wanted to get this one out. People have been asking for it, so here it is. And thank you very much for watching. If this helps you out, you know, I appreciate you get you know like the video, think about subscribing. You know, all that helps the channel and, and gets these videos out for other people to see it. So thanks again. We'll see you on the next video. See you soon.